Welcome back to the Bearded Garage. We got the 993 up on the lift today. Uh, we're actually going to do a, a couple of small projects. The uh, rear pads are uh, a little thin. I'm missing a, a stud from one of the lugs on the other side. And, uh, and then I'm going to paint the brake calipers. Uh, so uh, stay tuned. I'll show you what you got. So I bought this uh, G2 um, a brake caliper paint system. Um, it actually comes with uh, paint. You can actually pick the color. Uh, this is red because um, I'm pretty sure if I change these to red, I think it's 25 horsepower I get out of that. So I got to make sure I do that. Um, so uh, this is the um, so this is the paint, but this is the hardener. Um, they also include with it, um, this is a uh, brake cleaner for you. And then a, a stir stick and a paint brush. Um, before I do that, though, uh, the brakes are a little bit, a little bit thin here, so I'm going to replace the pads quick, um, and you can do it right here, which is pretty easy. Um, and then we're going to polish these up. Going to clean them up a little bit because they're, they are, uh, they are dirty. They're also, um, they're a little too smooth. I want them to be able to take this paint a little better. So I'm going to scratch them up a little bit and go from there. All right, I'm going to try and show you how I. Uh, replace the pads on a Porsche 993. You can see the last person um, left this wire uh, hanging here. This is the sensor wire. It's a uh, wear sensor. Believe it or not, you can actually at least have a little bit of play here. You can pull this forward and slide it up in here. Yeah, so some of this is torn. Maybe that's why. Okay, so either way, we'll start with it's the easiest thing to take off. So this metal bracket here um, holds the pads in. So uh, to keep the wires up out of the way, get this bracket here, so you pop it off. This bracket then slides down so you can release that. Um, you can take this off now, you can take it off later. It doesn't really matter. It just tends to get in the way. I will say that there are numerous ways to do this job, but what I've found is a simple set of pliers. Right, squeeze it till it pops on the bottom. And uh, you can then squeeze the top just a little bit. Once you squeeze this top, hold on, unrig that there. If you squeeze the top here, you can just take this off. You're going to need that later. And then all we have to do is, this is, come up high enough, there we go, to pry this out. I just set that up to the side. Uh, now, in order to get this part, we're going to have to have the um, the pistons compressed. Um, I'm replacing these, so I want to compress them all the way anyway. I've actually found that the Craftsman Robo Grip actually works really well. I, I don't know if that's what this is for. Um, normally, I wouldn't use it right here because I don't want to scratch um, the caliper, but I'll be honest, I'm painting these, so I don't actually care that much. So that's why I'm going to do this. I'll just buff that up with sandpaper in a little while. You can see I'm compressing it once compressed. That should come out relatively easy. Do the same for the other side. If it's not completely evident, I'm actually just squeezing the pad itself against the back of the rotor. And that pad is pushing in on the pistons to compress them. That those are loose they're probably held in yep they're still held in so the way to get them out actually we'll just compress these cylinders a little bit more uh, it turns out there's actually pad dampeners on here from the last install so in order to clear in order to get the pad dampeners out i gotta be able to clear the uh the pistons. And then I'll 
show you what I got. The other option is I can just pop the dampeners off. And they are just typically a light adhesive stuck to the back of the pads. Actually, you can do it with um, a little bit of uh, brake caliper grease too. That'll do the same thing. And that's what I actually put them back on with. So they come out now. And when I was talking about the dampeners, the dampeners are actually pistons have holes in them and these dampeners look like this so you can see they're a little piece of aluminum um, and they are different sizes actually the top one is smaller than the bottom ones so you really can't mess them up uh, we'll just clean these up with brake fluid because they actually do look nice and clean they're not all bent up and uh, uh, we'll just reuse them we'll probably just put some anti-seize on here stick them right back in there and slide the new pads and it'll be easy to go next step uh, these are wear sensors you can see the wear sensors are actually still uh, still good the way these work is they just have uh, continuity here so once the once the pad wears down far enough to wear the wire out here um, it breaks the circuit and turns the light on in the car um, you can be nice and careful with these and being more careful with this piece than the pad itself because I'm replacing the pad uh, so I just slowly work it out I think the back of it's plastic. I just don't want to mess it up. All right, so that'll come out nice and easy. And we can throw those pads, which we're pretty close to shot anyway. Throw those on the counter and do the same for the other side. The next step here is I'm actually going to take the uh, I'm actually going to take the rotor off. Um, if you can see, I got a wheel stud here, so. I initially bought this car uh, one of the big problems we ran into was uh, we broke a lug nut completely off now luckily I have some machinist friends and without damaging a tire we uh, we drilled it out but uh, now I've got a new one um, in order to replace it I believe I've got to take the the, uh, the, the, the rotor off and then we're gonna have to disassemble um, disassemble the emergency brake which is a set of shoes um, so we'll have to take the caliper off, take the rotor off, and we can sh show you what the shoes look like. To start, I'm just going to, um, there's a couple of set screws here. A couple things we need to do quick. So we'll take these out, and then we will remove the caliper. As a quick follow-up, I took the caliper off. There's a bolt here and a bolt down at the bottom that goes through these two holes. That is a 16 mil, uh, 16 millimeter um, a socket to take that off. Um, I've already actually fixed, I've already actually taken this off. So um, I undid the two screws, one here, one here. The way to get it off is you actually spin it um, in, in this particular side, spin it until um, it's about at the seven o'clock position and I'm going to show you um, Rather than try to show you through the hole. I'll just show you what I did Okay Now if you haven't done this before A little light here If you haven't done this before you'll see there's a hole right there that hole goes back to here. This is a uh, parking brake shoe adjustment, so what you want to do is actually uh, in order to release this, this, uh, these, these brakes, these uh, uh, shoes, you have to actually spin that towards the front of the car. So in this case, it's, it's uh, going that way. Um, and then what it does is it actually loosens up the shoes. Uh, once you loosen up the shoes, uh, then you can pull the rotor off. So now we've got to take the shoes off so that we can replace this, uh, replace this lug nut. All right, so I undid the compression spring on the top for the brake shoe. I only actually took the, um, you can probably see better. I only took one shoe off because frankly, I only have one, um, I only have one wheel stud to replace. I gave it a little bit of penetrating oil. I let it sit about two minutes. Uh, I'm gonna tell you, this guy's your friend. It's actually pretty easy. It's just pressed in there. Um, I'll show you how I'm gonna get the next one in. It's, comes out pretty easy. Take a couple of small wax. Uh, you just gotta clear it to get it out, and then uh, we should be 
good to go. Once you get that wheel stud in, I've got a wheel stud installation tool. Um, I believe all we do, push these two together, thread one of my lug nuts on here, and then use the impact wrench to draw it tight. So we'll see how that works. All right, that worked very well. Um, all we did was wind that all the way on, um, and uh, looks like it pulled that wheel stud right in place. And now I have the shoes back together. I've got my winding wheel almost all the way down, so I should be able to fit the rotors back on. Um, if you don't know, uh, these go in and twist over. You can probably see they actually are held back in here. You can see, oh, you can see it right there. See uh, the little wire? So the end of this wire, you just go and turn it and twist it. Every time I do shoes, I remember, I remember something a buddy of mine used to say. He was a mechanic. He said, if you're uh, if you've never done shoes, are you really a mechanic? And uh, ain't that the truth? Every time I do these, I go, damn, I I hate these damn things. So, um, all right, I'm throw the throw the rotor back on, and um, and then I think we can put the new pads in, tape everything up. I did notice, uh, looks like I got some of my tubing ripped here, so I'll replace that with some heat shrink probably. Um, and then we can actually scuff up the the calipers and maybe even paint them. So we'll get to that here shortly. All right, in order to allow the new paint to harden on here, um, I'm just going to buff this up a little bit. i got some, some 220 grit sandpaper here, and, and all I'm going to do is uh, um, clean up a couple of the, the corners and the edges just to roughen up so we can have something connect and something for the paint to bond to. So you notice uh, it's not perfect. you still got some imperfections here and here. Um, looks like brushing a little bit of those out but frankly uh, uh it's a caliper um frankly i'm just looking for the the red color is really what we care about so i'm gonna show you what i'm done all right i buffed this up a little bit you can see with uh, 200 grit sandpaper now it's time to put the pads back in so the first thing i want to do is actually uh clean up the dampers so i hit these with a little bit of uh brake cleaner um and uh, what i'm going to do is the holes back in here, uh, if you can see that, um, I am going to, there's a big one and a small one, and I'm going to put uh, put them in there and then add a little bit of um, brake grease on the uh, on the back of these pads and then slide the pads in, um, slide the brake pads right in there. So, uh, so they'll really be, once the caliper pushes, these will be stuck right to the pad. So the adhesive is still sticky, so I am gonna reuse them. I think got the light on now. You can see I put those dampers in there. I did get a little grease on that side, which is fine. I just didn't get it on uh, on the brake cal the the brake rotor here. So uh, I'm gonna slide the pads in. So grab a set here. I actually just just clean these pads. So the pads go in like like this. So we'll see. We can do this with the fan and the phone, and that's it, baby. That's it, it's a new set of pads in there, so. Um, and those will stick actually really nice. Hopefully, no squeaking. Now that the pads are in, uh, I'm gonna hook up the uh, the wear sensors. Uh, the wear sensors do have little metal clips on them. Uh, as long as you uh, don't lose those, I actually had one on the floor, so if it's very loose, you probably just, that, that little metal clip fell out. So pick it up and uh, slide it back together. Uh, now, what we're gonna do is uh, put this guy on. I'm gonna feed this through here. I'm gonna connect it at the top and then just push it in and snap it in the bottom. That kind of the reverse of what we did before. We took it off. Uh, this clip right here takes a little bit of muscle in to get it in. Uh, now we want to keep this wire safe. So we do that with, with this clip. Uh, it goes over top of here. So in order to get it in, I like to just give it this a little squeeze. All right. And then you can snap it in place. Once you snapped in place, you can slide it down. You can hook the wire up. And then snap it in place there. Now you're all set. Your uh, pads are back in place. Your sensors are on. Now we can get on to some painting. 
There's nothing special to taping this off. I like to tape off the rotor to make sure that I'm not getting paint on it. Uh, the G2 brush in the kit is actually pretty big. And then I just tape off the back. I don't want the pads getting anything on them. All right, we got the taping done. Is this perfect? No, no, it's not. However, now it's time for some, uh, some cleanup. Now I've actually already wiped these down a few times, but uh, before I get started, I really like to give it a little bit extra. So I'm gonna go around to all the, the calipers here that I have sprayed. Make sure they have a, and this is alcohol based, I believe. Uh, so all it's gonna do is just dry up real quick here. Um, but it's also a degreaser and a de-waxer. So anything that I might have on here will be uh, cleaned off and ready for paint. I'll show you what I got on the other ones. And I've gone through and repeated what I did on uh, all four wheels. I've uh, taped them off, I've buffed them up, I've hit them with, um, you know, I've, I've degreased them when I pulled the pads out, and then I went all the way through and uh, wiped them all down. And then the, the last piece was really, I got into, oops, see, need more tape. Um, the last piece was I went through all that waxer and degreaser, and I've done that actually a couple of times, and I keep running um, a clean paper towel over top of it to make sure there's no uh, black smudges that still come off. It looks like everything is, uh, these are nice and clean now, so. Looks like we're ready for paint. All right, the G2 paint here, we just opened up. It actually, uh, they say it's enough for three coats. So we'll see, it's only a half a can. Uh, so we mix in the hardener. And it's the entire bottle. plan here is to stir it so so in this particular setup uh, you're supposed to stir it for a minute or two and then let it sit for five uh, so we wait for the reaction time and then after five minutes stir again and you can start painting so we'll show you when we get to the painting part All right, it's been five minutes. I have remixed the paint and I'm gonna start applying here with the uh, brush that comes with it. So here we go, let's see how it looks. This is supposed to be enough paint to do all four calipers three times each some of the reviews say the paint is a little bit thin you want a first coat to be thin and then go from there so uh, you got to wait approximately 15 minutes between coats all right so that's what you look like after the first coat on the first caliper um, it took about seven minutes so by the time i Get the other three done, this will be ready for another coat. So um, I will tell you one thing I didn't mention before is I started with completely clean gloves. I didn't want to get, you know, um, oil and grease and shit back on the calibers after I cleaned them so much. Um, all of them look about like this. You can probably see that one over there. I've done the same. I'm gonna go for, um, I'm gonna go for paint job number two. I, I will say one thing that I've learned so far is I am not sure uh, I don't think the I think the fronts are gonna look really good. I think the backs will look okay. I can get down here on the floor and uh, look up underneath and actually paint from the backside. If you you know do this on the ground, I don't think you could do it. I think it, you need to either have a lift or take them off the car. Um, so the fronts will be a, a nine out of ten. I think the backs of the calipers will be a five out of ten. So I'll show you the next uh, step. Here I'm just applying coat two, uh, just trying to uh, keep the, the brush strokes to a minimum. I notice if I go back and forth, I, they don't have uh, high ridges. So just trying to keep it nice. All right, so what she looks like after the second coat. You can see a lot of the brush strokes are kind of 
melding in a little bit. Looks a little bit better. Not perfect, but uh, I think after the third coat will be uh, just where we want to be. You can see here, um, I have a little bit of paint left and probably be at least a good enough to finish this coat. So here we go. All right, it's been a full 24 hours. Um, the caliper is nice and uh, they don't feel soft at all. You can't scratch it. So what I'm gonna do is uh, peel all the tape off and see what we got, see how she looks. All right, so we've got the tape all done. We've got the last uh, the last step here. I think what makes it really uh, shine, I don't think you can actually probably see that very well, but there we go, focus. There we go. So I wasn't able to find these online. So luckily my wife has permanent adhesive and a vinyl printer downstairs in the house. So uh, we went out, I found the logo. We're gonna put this on. Oops. We're gonna put this on nice and put this on nice and straight. And press her in. I found if you do it with the back of your nail, it works pretty well. So. I don't do this, I wait at least 24 hours because I don't want the uh, the tape that holds the logo to peel the red paint off. So hopefully if everything went well, we'll just have a nice, pretty, <sighs> look at that, awesome. All right, so that's the end of the job. That's what we got, that's how she looks. Uh, it turns out uh, those are, are fairly easy. If anybody's interested in the dimensions or crap, even needs me to print some for you. Give me a call. Uh, send me a message. Uh, let me know. <laughs> I think that looks awesome. All right, that's it. Wheels are back on the car. She's looking pretty good. About ready to uh, finish this one up for today. Thanks again for tuning in this episode of The Bearded Garage. Smash that like button, hit the subscribe button so you can see what's coming up next, and we'll see you soon. America.